everybody it's Sarah and welcome to my crochet channel today's video is stitch number one and the introduction for our grandtastic year-long for 2019 crochet along and I'm very very excited about getting started on this crochet along we're going to begin with the basics how to make a basic granny square and as we move along each month, the granny squares will become more complicated. And so the way the granny square or the grandtastic crochet along works is each month we will do a six inch square together. Then you will make three more. So you'll have a total of four granny squares of each of the 12 patterns that we're going to do together. And then at the end of the 12 months, we'll make a granny square blanket. Now, if you want to make more than four of each of the ones for each month, make as many as you want to. You can make your blanket as big as you want to. <laughs> I'm going to be making mine the size, of course, of what the, the granny square uh, crochet long will be. We're going to be making 48 squares. And so since we're doing four each month, four times 12 is 48. Now that will give us a blanket that is six squares across and eight squares long. So if you want to make yours bigger than that, go right ahead. Now remember, each square is going to be approximately six inches. And then of course you'll have a little trim when we put them together. So, and then we'll do that when we're done we don't want to put them together as we go or you end up with all the same squares together in your blanket and i want to mix mine all up so that all the different styles are all mixed up within my blanket what you're going to need is any kind of worsted weight number four yarn i'm using red heart and this color is called aqua i believe or maybe turk i can't remember because i don't have the wrappers anymore because what i did is i took mine and i rolled it into cakes if you're going to make the size blanket that i'm making you're going to need approximately 28 ounces which equals out to about 1488 yards and I believe there's three and a half ounces on an average Red Heart Super Saver yarn. So you can kind of figure that out. And of course, this is a great project to use up all your leftover yarns. I'm going to be making mine all in one color. You can do yours in whatever color that you want to. You can use the ombre yarns, the striped yarns. You can even just get in your yarn stash and just use up all your leftover worsted weight number four yarns and make a absolutely beautiful blanket. I'm going to be stitching with the H hook and the H hook is a 5.00 millimeter crochet hook. You'll need a needle for weaving in ends and of course a pair of scissors. Now the other thing I have here is what I call the blocking board and I purchased these at Michaels. I think they're about five bucks for each and I have four of them and they work really nice for blocking your squares and the reason that you would want to block your squares I don't always do it but the reason that you might want to is because we're going to be making a lot of different styles and we want them all to fit together nicely and it makes it easier when connecting your squares when you're done if you took a few minutes and block them you don't have to and the way that I block mine is I just pin them on this board and I usually will stack them. I'll pin the first one down and then stack them up four deep. Then I'll spray them with a water bottle, nothing else, just water. I don't drench them. I just get them moist and I make sure that they're the shape that I want them. And then I either set them out on my back deck where it's warm and during the winter months, I set it on top of my dryer. So that's just a little hint that you can do if you want to block your squares. Remember, you don't have to if you don't want to. All right, we're going to start with square number one, which is the basic granny square. And I know there are lots of different ways to make granny squares. And I'm going to show you my favorite way. And in crochet, there are lots of different ways to come up with the same 
results. And so if you have a better way for you or a way that is more comfortable for you, feel free to go ahead and use that way. I'm just going to show you the way that I do it and the way that I think it's nice and easy. We'll begin with our slip knot and we're going to chain five. We're going to join this into a circle. So we'll take the tail of our yarn and put it over our hook and pull that through. And then we'll just snug that down so that we have a nice five chain loop. I'm going to add a little stay stitch or a little stay knot, I should say, that will keep that from coming undone. All right, now, when we crochet, we wanna make sure that we're cro crocheting over the tail of the yarn. So we're gonna put our hook in, we're gonna pull up a loop, and we're going to chain three. This chain three will count as our first double crochet. We're going to place two more double crochets in that chain five loop or circle. This is called a three double crochet cluster. Chain two, and now we're going to stitch three more three double crochet clusters with a chain two in between. And remember, our chain three at the beginning counted as our first double crochet. All right, so we have one, two, three, and I need one more set of three double crochets, chain two. Here's our first cluster, our second, our third, and our fourth. There's a chain two. We're going to join to the top of that chain three. And there is our four sets of three double crochet clusters with a chain two. And that is our first row or round. We're going to slip stitch in the next two double crochets. Then we'll slip stitch in that chain two space and chain three. And this is the way that your first row should look. All right, let's do row two. Now we slip stitched in those two double crochets, then we slip stitched in the chain two space, and then we chained three. The chain three counts as our first double crochet of row two. We're going to stitch in this chain two space two more double crochets because our chain three again counts as our first. We're going to chain two, and then we're going to stitch three more double crochets in that chain two space. Chain two, and now we'll move to our next chain two space and we'll stitch three double crochets, chain two and three double crochets. There's two corners, chain two and repeat. Three double crochets, chain two and three double crochets. chain two, and there's our third corner. Now we'll do our last corner, 
three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets in the chain two space, and then we'll chain two. There's our fourth corner. Now we're going to join to the top of that chain three. We're going to slip stitch in the next two double crochets. Slip stitch in the chain two space and chain three. And this is how row two should look. You've got your four corners and we have a chain two space in between each. Now we're ready to begin row three. We've slip stitched to the chain two space and chained three. And again, our chain three counts is our first double crochet and we're going to do the corner exactly the same. We'll stitch two more double crochets, chain two, and then we'll stitch two more double crochets, I'm sorry, three more double crochets. And chain two. So the corner is stitched the same. The chain three counts as one double crochet and we stitch two more, chain two and three double crochets and a chain two. Now we're gonna come to this chain two space that's in between and we're going to stitch three double crochets. And chain two. So we have a corner and a side. Now we come to the next chain two space and it's a corner. So we stitch three double crochets, chain two and three double crochets. <clears throat> we chain two and now we're going to stitch three double crochets in that chain two space on the side. And chain two. And you see what's happening? We stitch the cluster of three double crochets in that chain two space and because we chain two before and after, our next row we're going to have two sets of chain two spaces. All right. We're to our next corner, so I'm stitching three double crochets, chain two, and three double crochets. chain two, and now I'm going to put three double crochets in that chain two space on the side. And chain two. Now we're to our last corner. Three double crochets, chain two, and three double crochets. There's two and three. Chain two, and now we'll put three double crochets in the chain two space. And chain two. And that brings us back around to our last corner. So we'll join to the top of the chain three with a slip stitch then we'll slip stitch in those next two double crochets, slip stitch in the chain two space in the corner there, and chain three. So now we have the four corners 
and we have two chain two spaces on each side. So now we're ready for our fourth row. We've already slip stitched to the corner and we made our chain three. So we'll stitch two more double crochets in that chain two space. chain two and three double crochets in that same chain two space. The corners are worked the same on all the rows. And chain two. So your corners will always have three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, and of course your beginning one, your chain three counts as your first double crochet. So we've worked our corner and now the side has two chain two spaces. So we chain two, we stitch three double crochets in the chain two space. Chain two and three double crochets in the next chain two space. Chain two and that brings us to the corner. So we'll stitch the corner the same, three double crochets, chain two, and three double crochets. So there's our second corner, and again, they're stitched the same, three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, chain two, and again we have two chain two spaces. So we'll stitch three double crochets and chain two in each of those chain two spaces. Whoops, there we go. And then that brings us back to the next corner. And that's the way that this row is worked. You're working a corner, three double crochets, chain two and three double crochets. Then you chain two, three double crochets in the chain two space. Chain two, three double crochets in the chain two space. And then that brings you to the corner and you work it exactly the same. So we're going to repeat this on the next two sides. I've completed those next two sides, stitching the corners, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochets, and then chain two, and then three double crochets in the chain two spaces. And so now we're back around, and we're going to join to the top of our chain three. And then we'll slip stitch in those two double crochets, and slip stitch in the chain two space. And this is how the fourth row should look. Now, instead of having two chain two spaces on the side, we now have three. So what happens with a granny square is that for every row that you do, you gain a chain two space on each side. And that's how the square gets bigger and bigger. That's our fourth row, and we're going to do one more row. All right, let's do row five, and this is our last row. Our chain three counts is our first double crochet. We'll stitch the corner the same. We'll put two more double crochets in that chain two space and chain two, and then we'll put three double crochets in that same chain two space. All right, I have a tendency to kind of grab my granny square it just makes it easier to hold for me. All right, so we chain two and now we have three chain two spaces. So what we're going to do is place three double crochets and chain two in each of those chain two spaces.
and chain two. All right, so there's my corner and my three sets or three clusters of three double crochets, chain two. So now I'm to my next corner. Three double crochets, chain two, and three double crochets in the corner. chain two, and then again, three double crochets, chain two in each of the chain two spaces. Whoops, there we go. We don't want to mess that up, do we? All righty. and chain two. So you can see how row five works. We have our corners, which are stitched the same, three double crochets, chain two, and three double crochets. But now the sides of our square, we have the chain two, and then three clusters of three double crochets and chain two. And we'll repeat this corner and three sets of clusters on the next two sides for our row five of our granny square. I finished the four sides, four corners. Each one has the corner and then the three clusters with the chain twos in between. I'm joining to the top of my chain three. And then I'm going to tie off. So I'm going to cut my yarn. And then I'm going to put my hook in from behind and I'm going to pull that string to the back and we can weave that in later. Now, your square may look just a little bit wonky like mine kind of does and that's why I like to block them. It makes it easier to hook them together. But let's measure it. Let's see how I did. Six inch square. Now, that's another reason you might want to block your square, is if it's a little too big or a little too small, you can shape it to that six inch square. And so that's the way you make a basic granny square. Something really neat is that you could make a granny square bigger and bigger and bigger just by following that same pattern, and you'll notice that each row, you'll get an additional cluster of three double crochets and chain two space for each side. And that's the way that the granny square grows bigger. Now, like I said, I know there's a lot of different ways to make the basic granny square. This is my preferred way. If you have another way that you prefer, that's okay too. You do what works best for you. Next month's granny square is going to be a solid granny square, and that one's going to be a lot of fun as well. So I'll catch up with you in next month's grantastic crochet along. Mm -hmm.